And we are live. All right, all right, all right. It's Mike Wall back with another episode of the Agent Revolution podcast where we deconstruct the biggest challenges facing today's real estate agents so they can build a sustainable, profitable, and most of all, fulfilling real estate business. Man, I'm excited today. We get to go into one of the age old topics of branding, right? And we were talking a little bit before the show, guys, about over the, I don't know, last maybe 20, 25 years, there's been a paradigm shift to where now the broker is no longer the brand, the agent is the brand. And hopefully most of our audience members know that by now. But if they don't, uh, we're going to help them get educated. So welcome to the show, guys. I've got Mr. Michael Carr and Tanya Everhart, and uh, we're really going to dig in today. So why don't, Tanya, why don't you introduce yourself? Talk a little bit about, um, you know, how you got to where you're at. Talk a little bit about your background. All right. First of all, thank you so much for having us, Mike. We appreciate it. Um, so my background goes all the way back to college days when I was selling vacuum cleaners door to door. And for those of you who wondered, it's Early. Electrolux. Ele oh, I knew you were going to ask. Okay. <laughs> gonna ask. Yeah, it was Electrolux. So I sold them for three years, um, paying my way through college. And one day I, I sold uh, a vacuum cleaner to an engineer at a radio station. And he suggested that maybe I should apply for a sales job in radio. Well, fast forward 18 years later, I was still in media sales. And I and the there was one common thread of everything I learned throughout my time, beginning with vacuum cleaner sales, all through media sales. And that was the, the power of a personal brand. Yeah. I couldn't just approach a door asking them to open the door and let me in to sell a vacuum cleaner, right? You had to approach with a story. You had to approach with some authenticity and tell what sets you apart. And so I started that. And then from as soon as I got into radio, immediately I noticed business owners that were almost like rock stars. And I wondered what set them apart. And it turned out they were the voice and the face of their own business in their local markets. And that just made them rock stars. Yeah. So I started bringing people into the studio and radio, having them cut their own commercials. And that went from there to TV, to Internet, to putting them in their print ads, to everything you can imagine as far as being the face of your brand. So fast forward years later, the concept of brand face comes to me because I'm trying to figure out what am I going to do that I'm so passionate about that I can truly help people stand out in what they do and not waste those marketing dollars anymore. And so then, as luck would have it, I ran across this gentleman uh, not too long after that. And he is actually the original real estate brand face. I'll let him tell his part of the story. But um, that's where the idea of brand face came around was because I was trying to help these business owners set themselves apart because only then can you really create a name for yourself and tell what you stand for and attract the kind of people you're trying to attract. It's right. about a personal brand as it applies to business. And yeah. so that's how brand face came about for us. And the reason we focus mostly on real estate is because Michael is the original real estate brand face and because real estate desperately needs this. They really mm -hmm. do need that differentiation. Yeah. Love it. I love it, man. That, I've got a lot of, to dig into there. Michael, how about you? Well, my background originally was I was an auctioneer. I still am an auctioneer. And I and the guy that trained me to do auctions in the mostly automobile industry back in the early 90s, uh, he said, hey, you ought to get your real estate license and then you can call a real estate sale on Saturday, like a farm sale or something like that and and uh, make a little extra money. And then fast forward uh, to 2000, I opened up my own brokerage so I could have a little bit more autonomy, but I still didn't do anything but buy my own portfolio of land and, and uh, investment properties and things like that. Uh, still still predominantly an auctioneer, uh, but had a good little brand going, didn't realize it, didn't even know what it was. And then uh, in 2006, um, I got hooked up with a company out of Irvine, California, and we they came to me and said, hey, will you broker a, a, a big property auction for us? And I'm like, yeah, I can do one better for you. I'm, a, I'm an auctioneer and I've been selling property under tents and carnival style atmospheres for uh, the last 15 years. And uh, it was just a, a perfect marriage. But what I didn't realize was just how much work we were going to get out of selling the REOs. So that was right at the beginning of the REO debacle. 
uh, and uh, any of us that were there before and hadn't survived it, you know, that's 2008, 9, 10. We were traveling all over. I had an office in Seattle. I had an office in, in Irvine, California. I had an office in Atlanta, Georgia, which is where I'm from. And auctioneers always working themselves out of a job. So I knew I needed to revive something else. I was coming off the road from all of that work. I was flying 250,000 miles a year. I was licensed as a broker in 30 states. Uh, we were all over the place just, you know, cleaning this mess up. And uh, as, as the market began to work itself out of that, I'm like, okay, what am I going to do now? And I thought, okay, why not a brokerage? And I met a, a lady that said, uh, hey, I'll come on board with you as your first agent, but you got to do something about your marketing. Your marketing's terrible. And yeah. uh, and so I was busy still cleaning up the messes and debacle of that debacle and stuff. And I just didn't have time to mess with it. She kept telling Tanya, who happened to be her niece, uh, that uh, Mike needed help with his uh, advertising. She kept telling me, you need help. Call Tanya. Finally, Tanya called me and said, look, I don't know who's calling who, but, you know, I'm, I'm here to help if you need me. And she she pitched me the brand face concepts. And uh, I raked her over to Coles. Uh, I told her I'd already been there, done that. I insulted her. I literally told her, look, I've had four of the people just like you. They all lied. Uh, you know, marketing <laughs> doesn't work, you know, and all those kind of stuff like that. And uh, and uh, she finally just in frustration said, look, I've answered all your questions. You're going to have to trust me. That's all there is to it. I told her, well, I decided two weeks ago I was going to trust you. I just wanted to rake you over to Coles a little bit longer. I was in San Bernardino, California at the time when I told her, OK, let's get started. That was like 2013, end of 2013. I had no GCI income that year, effectively, because we're starting off at ground zero and coming off this road. But I had the name of, of an auctioneer and a real estate broker. I had sold more real estate, residential real estate than any broker, in, individual broker in the United States. Uh, don't know without a debacle if anybody will ever catch that record. She thought that uh, that was a great hook. And she took the brand face concepts and um, we did so well. Our company continues to grow now. We went from one tiny location, you know, outside on, out, on the uh, suburbs of Atlanta to two locations, working on a third location, working on a location in Jacksonville, North Carolina. In fact, uh, we do business in 10 states and, um, you know, life is good. She said, look, this works so good. Will you co-write the book with me for real estate agents and help other real estate agents? I thought it was a fantastic opportunity. And so that brings us to you. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, there's a lot there. So um, so you were kind of you were you you were the original project. Right. And, and so the idea was born in, 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 in Tanya's head. And then you you came along kind of at the perfect timing, so to speak. Um, you had a great story, right? Which is mm -hmm. what you need. Tanya, that's something you mentioned is having a story, right? And, and Michael, you had a great story. And so you guys were able to put that together. And, and now it's been like this, this business that's, you know, it, it's, it's grown exponentially and you guys are having a lot of success. But so if we rewind the tape, so if, if, if we're talking about one thing, I, like I said it kind of tongue in cheek when I was introducing the show, but the reality of it is there are agents out there who still think that the broker is the brand. And, uh, and and you see this a lot of times by, you know, I mean, there there are agents in my town and I hope they don't hear this. But I mean, they're riding around with the name of their brokerage on their license plate. Yep. And, and, and so they're they're totally, you know, it, it's like they're missing the point. And so a question I had for you guys is what is the cost of not building a brand? Uh, well, uh, that's a great question. You that's, take that one. Yeah, that's a fantastic <laughs> question because, you know, we need to think about that. Even with our clients, like this is a thought process agents should have. Any salesperson should have. Right. What is the cost of not doing business with me? Right. And and it's it's incalculable, actually. You know, I, I like to say, like, it's hard to determine the cost of confusion. Also, right. It's hard to hard to figure that out and what that costs you by not building the brand. But here's the thing. Um, you should build a, your own brand because it's you that people do business with. Like on yeah. the back of my book, it says people don't do business with a logo. They do business with a person. Right. And if you are that front runner, uh, that's going to be hands on with the client. 
then you're the person that needs to be recognizable. I'm a broker that hires agents, right? And I have agents under me, like very selective about the people that I take on because I want to take on people that are serious about growing a six figure income. But they, but, but I want them to be the front of their brand. I'm still involved with that. I'm still on billboards. I'm still on the back of cards. I'm still on mail outs. I'm still in the website. My story is still the lead story on the website, right? As the face of the brokerage. But every one of my agents, they have their own page. They have their own taglines. They, you know, the, the bulk of the advertiser, if we do a send out and, it, and it's a card and they open it up, it's my agent's face and likeness and their story that is inside of that because right. they're the people touching each one of the individual agents every day. Right. I would like to be able to touch hundreds of clients a year, but I can't, you know, it's impossible. So I have to do the bomb bombs and the, that sort of thing to keep a connection with, uh, with our end user. But I want my agents to be very recognizable everywhere they go. And yeah. so that would cost anybody like in my bro working in my brokerage, a substantial amount of income, if they work for a brokerage that said, hey, just put our initials on the back of your card and all of a sudden you get a lot of business, which is not yeah. the case at all. Yeah. So how do you those agents out there and, and you know, you're not going to get to everybody. We know that. But there are still a lot of agents out there. Um, you know, they make decisions on where to hang their license based on um, the name of their brokerage. And oftentimes when people get into this industry, they make that mistake. And then they realize over time that, you know, Hey, I, I, I keep I'm talking to my clients and, you know, they're telling me, Hey, you're doing a great job. You're doing a great job. And, you know, I'm starting to realize, you know, this is, and it's not selfish. You just start to understand that the business is about you. Right. And, right. and so, and slowly you make that transformation, but not everybody goes through that. So my question for you guys is how are you getting through to those people or do you even want to get through to those people who who maybe um, don't realize that that they're not the, that 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 the brokerage isn't the brand? Or are you looking for those people in that kind of that transformative stage of real, starting to realize that they are the brand? What 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 is the ideal client for you guys? Yeah. Well, first of all, our job, a lot of our job today is to educate people and let them know exactly what you just said, because mm -hmm. a lot of people don't realize that just because they've never it's never been presented to them that way. It's you get used to something and then you just as Michael says, you can get used to a nail in your head. It's there long enough. Right. You get, <laughs> but yeah. So our ideal client is somebody who um, who who is so um, concerned with the message and image that they put out there for themselves because they don't want to waste time. They don't want to attract the wrong type of clientele. And there is such a thing as the wrong type of clientele. If it's yeah. not a good fit for you, if you don't have the knowledge set, if you cannot help them, if you don't enjoy doing business with them, if they don't appreciate you, it's all wrong, no matter yeah. what it is. So you've got to create this brand and put out a message and image that's going to help you attract the kind of people you're seeking to attract. I yeah. tell you that the thing to me, Mike, that is a little bit more um, challenging for us than even to even uh, trying to tell people that their brokerage is not their personal brand mm -hmm. is to try and get them to focus in on what we call ideal customers because they want to work with everybody. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that is a little bit more challenging. We find than people who don't understand that their brokerage is not their brand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was hoping you know, we do too. I'm, I'm so sorry, Michael. Um, and, and we'll, why don't you go ahead with your point, but I'm going to come back to that attracting clients. So just be thinking about that. Go ahead. Mike. Yeah. yeah. Well, I was just going to say like we it, it's very interesting. We have had very little kickback from brokers. I want to say that, you know, on the show, because I think brokers are realizing that, you know, and especially if they are brokers that uh, that um, either individualized franchisees of, of bigger franchise type brokerages or where they have a lot of autonomy in their own name and things like that, then they tend to understand the the need for branding of themselves and the brokerage and the, the agents, you know, it's the, it's the newbies that come in. Like you said, I was like, I met a guy one time at a, at a restaurant in Panama city and I was down there for an event and I met this guy and he's like, Oh, I just joined, you know, so, so brokerage, he hands it to me and the whole card is nothing but the brokerage, like yeah. not the individual brokerage, 
the big franchise brokers. I'm like, dude, look, I'm going to give you the best piece of advice I can. They need to be recognizing this, like that you need to be on the back of this card. And that still has to be there to the legalities of the state that you're working in. But but you need to be the face that everybody recognizes. Like, and I saw the light bulb go off about that. And yeah. uh, because of the paradigm shift that you spoke of, I think people are beginning to realize just how important it is. And we all have an individual story. So, Call Michael, talk real quick about why that's important. Why, why is it important that your face is on there? Well, it's like I said, you know, I think what I find with agents that one of the biggest mistakes that they make in trying to build their business is yeah. they want to farm like this. They want to farm Atlanta, right? Like I want to farm Atlanta too, but you to farm Atlanta, you need to have like millions of dollars a month going out in billboards and radios and all this kind of stuff. We can't, most, most average agents can't do that. You want, you're starting from zero. You're investing in money in yourself. You're investing thousands of dollars in schooling and time and not working another job to get started. You're probably 90 days from your first paycheck. You know, the concept of building that pipeline. So, so you're not another 90 days getting a pot uh, is all all a learning process and that yeah. sort of thing. So one of the things that I tell people is, okay, let's reduce your farming area. Yes, if your broker gives you a lead 30 miles away, go do the lead. You got to work, right? Take the leads, take the junk leads, take the the, the the properties you don't necessarily want or the ideal customer. It's not your ideal customer. Go get the paycheck now. But when you're building your brand and you're building your market, you want to look for that ideal customer and you need to shrink your farm down a little bit and get really known in that farm. You need to go to the high school events. You need to participate. Like my agents, they go to the trick or treat events. They go to the chamber of commerce events. They go to the luncheons. They go, they constantly have their badge on. They, they're, and then the neighborhoods of the other people that are inside those, the council and, uh, and the, uh, the city council meetings and the zoning meetings meetings and PTAs and uh, church events and organizations and recreational events. They're there. Then they're running into them in the restaurant. Then they're seeing them on a billboard. Then they're getting a card from them and you then they people begin to register. And, you know, we know it's an old marketing principle. If somebody wants to be recognizable, you, you people have to register you five to seven times and, yeah. and to, for that to be able to happen. Well, if you're going out here and you're just saying, hey, uh, XYZ Realty, Michael Carr and Associates Realty or whatever, you know, uh, and, and that's all that's recognizable. There's no face that's yeah. recognizable to that. Right. And, and we know how important recognizing a face is because now all of our security is going to facial recognition software. Right. We know this babies recognize faces instantly. Right. They, this is long since proven years, decades and decades. We figured that out years ago. So it's very important that their face is on the advertising because they're the ones that are going to run into their potential clients. When they're at those events in the communities or even when they see them on Facebook and Instagram and all their social media. Yeah. So and, and you know, that's um that's a good segue into um Tanya, what you were talking about before is is attracting your ideal client. And I think that you know, most people like most people don't know that there's actually a way to do that. I think most people Michael, like you, I think they start off with, well, I, I want to attract all of Atlanta, right? Mm -hmm. And it, the reality of it is that's once you've been in the business for a while, you understand that that's not really what you want, right? right. Uh, but you want to attract people that are like you, that people, people that, you know, you want to do business with. I mean, they want to do business with you and you want to do business with them. And so Tanya, talk a little bit about like, how do you guys, how do you guys um, encourage agents to do that? What, what is the process you're taking people through to help them do that? Okay, so the process we use, we call it a 3D dominoes effect. And what that means is you get them all, you get all three Ds right. And it's like that beautiful cascade of dominoes. It just goes in that awesome pattern and then they all fall perfectly, right? Yeah. And, and that's the way the business should be done. So uh, the 3Ds are define, develop, and display. So in the define phase, we look at three things. First of all, we'll, we're going to take a look at who those ideal customers are, creating that snapshot of those people. And it's not designed to box you in to say you can only work with first time home buyers. That's not what it's designed to do. A lot of times we look at the attributes of those individuals, the life phase that they're in, the personality that they have, the long term goals they're seeking. People can be defined as ideal customers in different ways. 
And so once we create that snapshot, we uh, then we take a look at the individual agent. What is it about you, Mike, that sets you apart, that differentiates you from everybody else? Right. And it could be anything. And that's the beauty of it. It could be because you are so responsive that you're never not going to return a phone call. Right. It could be that you are so knowledgeable about a certain area of the community where the bunch of private schools are. It could be that you're knowledgeable about the intracoastal waterways and because you live that lifestyle. It could be many, many things. It could just be because you are just the guy who is a family guy. You get to treat everybody like family. And then you've got to find creative ways to expound upon that. But differentiation can come in many different forms. So we take a look at those things that differentiate you. And the beauty of all of that formula is you match them up, right? You look at what those ideal customers are seeking. What do they want out of an agent? What do they really want in throughout the process? And then you find something about that agent that really matches up with what those people are seeking, something they're going to appreciate about them. And you put those two together and then you come out with what we call a brand identifier, a, a tagline or slogan, if you will. And that a tagline, a brand identifier should state who you are or what you do or stand for. And so once that is out there, it kind of puts the framework or the guardrails up along the brand. So you don't deviate from the path. You don't just try to reach out to everybody because now your brand is defined. You know who your ideal customers are, what sets you apart, and you've got that brand identifier that's going to keep you on that path. So that's the definition phase. When we move into development, we're developing what that brand looks like, sounds like, and feels like. Brand messaging, creating an elevator pitch, something we call signature sound bites, which are highlights of the brand at a glance, that Reader's Digest version, a biography, um, things like that that will allow you to clearly communicate what it is that sets you apart in a very unique way. And then everything about what the brand looks like, your brand colors, your personal brand logo, images that are going to represent your brand on your marketing materials, photos of you and how those photos are going to portray the image you want to portray that matches that brand. Yeah. Then in the final phase, it's display. We take those elements, if you will, from the development phase, and we make sure the new brand is displayed correctly and consistently across all of the everyday marketing platforms. Your website, all your social channels, your everyday collateral materials, those need to be infused with the brand. They have to be consistent. They have to showcase what sets you apart. And mm -hmm. that's what we do is those three steps. Okay. I'm curious. Um, one thing I've always wondered about branding is that like when you take a typical agent and, and you're doing all this and honestly, that is that is like that's mind blowing. I mean, what you guys are doing, I think that's incredible that you've got a system set out like this. But I'm curious, like when you create a brand like that, usually does like the agent do do does the brand evolve with the agent or does the agent evolve into the brand? That might be one of the best that questions might be we've one ever of the had. Best questions ever. Yeah. <laughs> And, uh, and, and actually, the answer, you go ahead. Both. Yeah, it's, it's actually both. It. It's it's, both. Okay. Yeah, because what's so interesting about this, and it has been an absolute phenomenon, Mike, is that the moment somebody learns what their brand identifier is going to be, they immediately begin to think differently. They have different conversations. They send different emails. They answer the phone. Everything about their mindset forms and changes from that point. We've had many agents call us up and say, you know, I, I haven't even gotten to the brand messaging yet. I just know my brand identifier. I know my elevator pitch. I'm introducing myself this way now. And people's eyes are popping open and saying, oh, my gosh, that's what you do. Mm -hmm. That's exactly where I am in my life right now. Mm -hmm. And they're identifying with that. And then the agent who maybe some of them come in and they're not quite at that confidence level yet. They're thinking this all, this branding stuff all sounds pretty good. Yeah. It's on target, but let's just see what it does. When they start to get that feedback that increases that confidence level. And if they aren't already both feet in, they are definitely both feet in from there moving forward. They yeah. grow, they, they grow together because honestly the best scenario is when you become one with the brand. Yeah, it is. We, we say that uh, a good brand doesn't just change the way people see you. It changes the way you see yourself. And, they, yeah. and you do. We find that people do fill that space. 
And we've had we, one client stands out in my mind and she was so excited. She called us on the phone and she said, look, she goes, I, you know, well, this lead came up on our on our lead source that anybody in the brokerage could grab up. And she said, I saw that, you know, this guy was was uh, saying, hey, I think I can handle this one. And she said, then I realized what kind of property it was. And I realized that was my identifier. And I'm like, no, no, I got it. I'm the and she took it over and she got the listing just like that. So it's like you saw no, this realization fine. in her mind that she's like, oh, wait just a minute. That's me. And uh, yeah. And it makes a big difference. And so, she's an EXP agent in Philly. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. So like how, how hard is it for an agent to build a brand? Like what, 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 what kind of, in, like what kind of time investment do, 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 would somebody be looking at um, to try and do this on their own? Oh boy, that's a million dollar question. Yeah. That's yeah. tough. I'm not it, really sure. It took sure. me 15 years to get it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Then I met her. <laughs> All of us still have 15 years left to give. I know. I, know, right. I, know. I, I can tell you the time frame that that um, it's that it generally takes is about eight weeks, mm -hmm. and that's because we've got this thing dialed so much into a system of knowing what needs to be done. What's so fascinating about it is everybody's brand comes out 100% unique. Mm -hmm. There is no, there is no one with the same look and feel and message and everything. You know, no one. And yeah. so each person comes into it with their own set of strengths and they come out to it out of it with their own unique brand. And yeah. so the system that you have in place doesn't take away from that. It really just makes you more efficient in putting it all together. It does. Yeah. And yeah. there's eight modules that, you know, we put agents through and we complete them and we hold them by the hand and we actually do it for them and get that brand all built and up and out there. And yeah. that takes about eight weeks. So yeah. but to, to do it yourself, it, it just depends on how much knowledge you have. And I know we have a lot of agents that we've been working with that have a lot of marketing knowledge, but there's mm -hmm. a big, big difference between branding knowledge and marketing knowledge. Yeah, and difference. because you know how to market something doesn't mean that you can look inside yourself and pull all those things out for your personal brand. Yeah. One of our favorite statements is it's hard to see the label when you're inside the jar. Yeah. 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 I, I, I never am one of those people like I, oh, I love leveraging experts, you know, and, and I, you start to realize that, um, the longer you've been in the business and you know, you, or you, it's where you start to trade, it's where you start to have more money than time, right? And what, what you do is you leverage yourself, you leverage your time back. And so I'm a, I've always been a proponent of hiring experts in, um, to, you know, to like for lead generation. I mean, there's certain things you just don't want to take. You're not built, you're not, you're not a successful agent and you're building websites. I mean, you're just not right. doing some of this stuff. Like you're hiring experts. And, um, so I've always been a proponent of that. And I've always likened, um, Branding to me has been like, you know, when, when we when we have our Monday morning meetings with our agents, it's like, especially our new guys, right? Our new guys and gals, they come in, it's like, you know, they're ready to take over the world. And it's like, well, you know, what you got to do is I, 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 I give the visual of an airplane. You know, when an airplane takes off, you're you're spending the most amount of fuel to get the plane off the ground. Mm -hmm. and, and then you're climbing, you're climbing, you're climbing, you're getting to 30,000 feet, right? And so that's that period of where you know, you start to build your brand at the bottom there when you're still on the runway, right? And then you, you know, you're going up and up and up and it takes the most amount of energy at the beginning to get that brand going, to get people recognizing it, right? right. And then once people start to recognize it in your community, right, that's when you get to 30,000 feet. And not to say you can dial it back, but you know, it's, it's, it certainly takes a lot of effort. It, that might be the moment that you make that call, right, into the neighborhood. And they go, oh yeah, I see your signs everywhere. Your brand exactly. is your 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 tagline is this, right? And and then you you know then you get that big smile on your face, yeah. and you're thinking, oh, everything's starting to come together, right? Yep. Yeah, yeah, and yep. we hear that statement so much, and you know, I totally agree with what you said. You cannot just put that on perpetual autopilot, right? Yep. <laughs> Be right. But you can coast for a, for a while because you don't change your brand doesn't, and what you stand for, and the culture you want to build, and the you know business ethics you build upon that that doesn't change. You might tweak a few things here and there every couple of years, get a new photo shoot, replace a background image, change a bullet point, but mm -hmm. for the most part, that brand is you and mm -hmm. it's not going to change that often. Yeah. What mistakes do you see agents make who try to do this on their own? There's a lot of them. Uh, you know, I think the biggest one a lot of times is inconsistency. 
Uh, and I, that's one that I harp on a whole lot. Like I'm very big on consistency and consistency and like doing it. And, uh, you know, uh, we had one of our clients say the other day and I really loved it. She said, done is better than perfect, which I really thought was awesome because I'm that type of a person. And you know, nobody in my organizations get fired for making a mistake. You know, they might get fired for lying about a mistake, but they, but they're not going to get fired for having it. If they, you come forward, we'll fix it. Whatever it is, it's fixable. Right. But, you know, I like doers. Like you got to get out here and do it. And I think the biggest mistake mistake that people make is not staying consistent in that. And we in the pro our program helps a whole lot with that because I mean we believe in media calendars and things like that. There's a lot of peripheral knowledge that comes in our program that helps you to to be linear in the way that you think about your about your pipeline and also setting it far enough in advance and learning the difference that if you skip a day, then that's a day you don't get paid, right? And they're like, well I'm not gonna pay it anyway. And I'm like, yeah, but you're gonna get paid if you keep doing these things like you're supposed to do. I think yeah. Consistency for me would yeah. be the, the biggest mistake I see people make. And that includes not being consistent in how they market. You know, I had one, yeah. one of our clients said one time they were like, yeah, you know, I sent out like thousands and thousands of postcards and nobody called. Like, you know, I'm like, like how, how many, how many did you send? I sent out 10,000. I'm like, how many times did you send it? Well, I sent it once. And I'm like, you'd have been better off to send 10 to a thousand people than yeah. you are send a thousand, you know, a 10,000 yeah. one time because you've got to have consistency. Right. right. It's a great yeah. analogy. I think you're, I, you, we see agents do that all the time and it is, it is so much about consistency when you um when you when you get into this business what at what point do you think it's important that you start to think about your brand immediately yeah, if right not yesterday mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. And while you're in school that's true Learn, that's yeah. true we've had people join our program before they even signed you know with their broker mm -hmm. um or we got their license as a matter of fact because they knew they wanted to enter into it with the right mindset from the very beginning. It's a whole lot easier to start correctly than to undo something and undo some sort of brand that's already out there because everybody yeah. does have some sort of brand. Many are not recognizable because they're just not consistent and they're, they don't stand out. But yeah. those that do could be headed in the wrong direction without realizing it. Yeah. So, um, and, and then on the flip side, we've had agents that have been practicing for 35 years in real estate and come to us and say, okay, I realize that it's getting more competitive out here. I have to do more to stand out. And so I, I need, I need to know what's different about me so I can compete with all these new agents coming in. Yeah. Yeah. We used to say, you know, we used to, she, she used to say, and she wrote a, wrote a blog about it. And I think it was, published a realtor magazine and she, and uh, she said, you know, branding, uh, you know, starting your career without branding is like leaving a house with no clothes on. Right. Which is, is really true. And, and you know, it's sort of like it's it's you, you, you if you do any advertising beforehand, you're good. You're just going to undo that with the new with your right and correct brand and yeah. then, and then pu pushing towards and trying and spending your good marketing dollars as good dollars, you know, attracting the people that you want to do business with. You know, like I think that's just such a big thing in our business. There are people that we don't jihad with. That's a Southern saying, obviously, but there's some people we just don't get along with as well as other people like that. But guess what? They have somebody that speaks the exact type of body language, act, the activities, brain waves, thought processes as they are. You, you do too. And you need to go spend your good marketing dollars looking for those birds of a feather type of a thing. Yeah. Uh, you know, because we all know we, and we stay in the business for those people and just say, Oh, you know, Mike had us the greatest house ever. He helped our family along with the process. We had no worries. We had no, and then we all had those as like, Oh, you know, Mike never did anything I wanted him to do. And that might not <laughs> be true. Right. But yeah. so you want to look for those people. Obviously, I think it's so important. And branding does that. And, for, yeah. and day one is the time to start. Yeah. And, and I like we've like when you start out as, as kind of a solopreneur, right, you're just you're kind of an agent on your own. And so my evolution has been um, the Mike Wall home selling team, the wall group and then the Love Ohio living team. Like I've morphed in like I've not. The funny thing is, is like I, I've, I've been full time in this business um, since 2014. I've actually been licensed since 2002, but um, I've been full time building a team. Uh, since 2014. And that is kind of the evolution. I got it wrong, got it wrong again. And I just kind of started to figure out, you know, what I what was important to me and what I wanted to do. And that's how the name evolved. But I'm curious for you guys, how do you how do you feel like 
branding a name like your name as the as the main real estate agent or branding like something like a team name that doesn't have anything to do with the real estate agent what are your thoughts on that i like my my i know it's much tougher to build a brand that doesn't include somebody's name i mean i we know like coca cola we know some of these companies spend billions and billions of dollars trying to do that um, and there's no face of Coca-Cola. In other words, you could show their right. CEO on TV and you wouldn't know what he looked like, right? But right. you show that brand, that, that you know what Coca-Cola's brand is. So what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I, I strongly believe that in today's, in real estate most especially, you, like in Coca-Cola, I can go to a store and buy a Coke and I don't have to interact with any one person except the person right. checking me out. And if I go to a Coke machine, I don't even have to see anybody, right? <laughs> but dealing in real estate, you're dealing with people. Yeah. And so your name obviously goes along with your face. So it doesn't, your name does not have to necessarily be the name of your business. You can have a different business name. Yeah. The real clear thing is your face, you need to be recognizable as the leader of that business, whether it's named after you or not named after you. Yeah. You need to be recognizable as the leader in the face of that business. And you also need to be able to tell people, why they should do business with you, whether it's your name or your company name, doesn't matter. You still, that differentiator mm -hmm. has to be in there somewhere. Yes. And that's where that brand identifier comes along so well, because it could be the name of the company. And then that brand identifier stating, Hey, this is what separates us. This is what we're known for. Mm -hmm. And that pulls everything together then, but you still, I think a lot of people look at it as one or the other. And we say both, there's nothing wrong with having a, a real estate name of comp the name of your company be the name of, it has Ohio in it, or it has the name wall group in it. Yeah. What matters is, do they know you? Do they recognize your face and do they know what sets you guys apart from everybody else? Yeah. Yeah. That's a great point. And I, so like, like tell me like, how does the program help, help agents um, market? Like when, when, when you guys are, if you take someone on and you have these obviously three different these different pillars that you're helping um, them go through and and and, and talk about um, the different processes, like for you guys, how did you come up with that? Like, how did you? I mean, obviously you went through trial and error with Michael. I know that, and, and we all do that as business owners. But like, how did you build out the process so that it was a finely tuned machine that you took agents through these specific modules? Like, talk to me, talk to me about how you did that. Yeah, sure. Well, first of all, it predates Michael for quite a few years because I was doing that in other in, in my other roles and in another company that okay. I co-founded before he and I met. So I was already doing that. So that was more like almost 30 years of doing what I do and okay. pulling all of that stuff together. But when you look at it, anything that you do has a start and it has an end. Right. Yeah. And you realize, well, if we do this before this, then that's not really going to work right? We can't have a photo shoot before we understand what their brand identifier is, what sets them apart, who they're going after, what their brand colors are, and what their background images need to look like. Because the clothing they wear, the poses we want them to have, the image we want them to portray depends largely on the definition of the brand. Mm -hmm. What are you trying to convey? Yeah. And what brand colors do we have? And is it a, you know, what, what, um, what level of, sh of photo shoot do we want to have? Is it lifestyle driven? Is it more excitement? Is it, you know, what are those things? So that really just became um, a factor that happened as we went along. Uh, but, mm -hmm. but I spent many years watching the, you know, how these patterns took place and realizing that if you get even one thing out of order, your entire marketing budget is shot. Yeah. Because marketing is all about, um, and now I shift to marketing because your brand is what you market, right? Sure. So, so marketing is about putting out the right message to the right people at the right time, enough times. Yeah. And so you've got to get all those right. And if you don't get all those right, you've wasted your money. And I saw so much money being wasted in oh, the yeah. first couple of decades of what I was doing, You're watching business owners who were spending $100,000 a month market with the most mundane, boring, vanilla marketing I had ever seen in my life. Yeah. 
And then you. you learn a lot from what other people do wrong over the years and what you yourself do wrong as well. I've yes. made many mistakes early in my career. And I think it's only that experience that gets you to the point where it's yeah. like, okay, we've got this. This is turnkey. This is awesome. Not that, you know, you don't have hiccups along the way. It's like, oh, shoot, you know, uh, that, that, that image might not work with this photo of you. So we'll sub that image out, right? But those are little things. The big things are all in place and in the right order. Yeah. yeah. So what you're saying is you pretty much I, this is something you took 30 years to become an overnight success. Right. And and so by the, <laughs> by the time you met Michael, this is something you kind of been working on in, in your head and through your experiences that when when Michael came along, you were ready to put him through this system because you'd been working on it for so long and you knew that it would work. You Maybe you had to make some tweaks here and there because he was kind of the first person to go through it. But this is. I bet that was an exciting point for you to see to say, hey, all right, I'm ready to do this. I'm going to run Michael through this. And you ran him through it. And Michael, what exactly did it do for you once she ran you through that system? G give me some of the, the specifics on what how it changed your business. Oh, it, 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 it made us explode, really. Like you have to understand we we are in a small town. Like I like when I tell people I'm from Atlanta. Uh, I'm from the suburbs of Atlanta. And I grew up in, in Gwinnett. If you're if you're familiar at all, it's on the northeast side. of, And it was the fastest growing county like twice in, in the decade of the 90s. Right. And actually, I think landed on it again sometime in 2000. And and so being a young child growing up into that and stuff, I saw the, these developments going on, you know, in high school and right after high school and all this kind of stuff, missed out on a whole lot of that. So I thought, okay, what's the wise play? Well, I'm going to go up a little bit north of that because it just makes sense that the pattern of growth would continue to follow, right? So yeah. I moved up into the next county, which we were right at the county line where I grew up. I moved up in the next county and I found this quaint little beautiful town where there's less than 10,000 people in it, or there was, it's changed now. You know, we had 300,000 head of cattle. We only had it. So when I say I grew up, <laughs> up in, in Atlanta, I grew up in it's this tiny little town, like and moved to a tiny town that now I look back at that tiny town I grew up in, it's exploded. It's huge. It's huge. I graduated with a hundred kids in in early nineties, you know, and my daughters graduated with like six thousand kids, you know what I mean? So it's like ridiculous how it did. And so um and so when I came up here, I said, Okay, I wanna I've been I've been flying all over the place. I've been running like a wild Indian. I want to, I want to just uh, calm down a little bit and get back to home and the basics. Of, and I really wanted to recede into the woodwork and just own a company that I have a few agents. We we're making some money. I like to buy and sell real estate. I just love it all, the, all of the processes of it. So I thought that's what I do until she came into my life and she said, look, I've written this book. I want you to read it. She said, we're going to be going through these principles together. You know, you're going to be the face of the brand. And I, we actually argued a little bit about it because I'm like, I don't want that. And she goes, oh, no, you're going to do it. You know, and you're going to do it with all you're going to be authentic about it. You're going to be honest and you're going to be all these things that I was anyway. And then I find it's that, you know, 99 percent of all agents are. You know what I mean? Like if you look at the statistic, I got to throw this as a sidebar. If you look at the statistics of how many lawsuits and stuff that really come out of real estate, they're very minute for the amount of people that practice real estate. They really are because most people are really good, genuine, honest people. And I find that all of the clients that we've worked with, they want to be the best, like they really do. And so I wanted that. I just didn't know I needed to be the face of my brand. So anyway, I did that. I was fairly unknown in this town at the time. Um, and so, like I said, 2013 didn't really have a GCI. I think we made, you know, 10 grand or something like that in GCI, just goofing off. We didn't even have yeah. a sign yet in the office. It was just, I bought a building and it was just a tiny little building. And, and so she comes along, we start changing, we changed our tagline. I had the tagline, I had anything real estate. She changed the, the logo and the way it looked. So it was recognizable at 80 miles an hour instead of the script goofy font that I had, you know, that I thought was cool, but it really wasn't. And so she's like, you got to be memorable. It's got to stick out. But when we did the, the next thing, you know, I had like four agents hired within six months. Um, our GCI took off in way into the six figures uh, right off the bat. People begin to notice us in town. You know, I, I go, I go to, to, I'd lived here for at that time, I moved here in 2007. So this was 2014, summer 2014. I walk into this restaurant and I order a sandwich and this lady and and I, and I give her my credit card to pay for it. And she looked at it and she goes, are you the Michael Carr? And well, I had never been the anything, you know what I mean? So I thought, I thought the Michael Carr it took me a minute, like it sort of shocked me. And she said it because the word around town had begun to spread. 
this yeah. guy had come in here and, you know, he's been here, but six months ago, he opened up his, this uh, real estate office and they, you know, they got listings in these neighborhoods. They've got four agents. The agents were local, except for Carolyn, who was in another city, um, not far from here. Uh, so it, it happened instantly just like that. And I thought, Oh my goodness, we've got something right here. You know, and I realized how right she was. And I've just been yeah. telling her and following what she tells me ever since. And it's really worked out for me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And, you know, like the cool thing about that story is, is I think that consumers are looking for something to attach themselves to. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. They're looking yeah. for brands to attach themselves to it because it makes life easier for them when they can do that. Night, right. It's, it's like, let's face it. I mean, how many how many consumers have, you know, a lot of space in the old parking garage upstairs for a ton of realtors? Not many. You know what right. I mean? So maybe one, two, if they're lucky. Right. And, and so, like, if you can become that one or two that, you know, that they identify with, I mean, you're getting mind share at that point. And that that's that's the reality. That's what you want. Right. It is right. because you want when when either they think about real estate, <coughs> excuse me, or when they hear somebody talking about real estate, that they give your name. Yes. And if you've got mind share, then that's what you that, that's the reward of being able to get mind share. Well, you've yeah. said it before on a lot of your podcasts. I mean, we're a commodity, right? And yeah. I, like, it's just, they, you know, they could be, their best friend could be in real estate and somebody in a grocery store say, do you know a good realtor? And they might have seen my face on a billboard and say, oh yeah, we'll call Michael Carr and Associates. Don't they? And their best friend might be a realtor. They don't know, they don't do it like out of malice. It's like you said, you got to have the mind share. Like it's got to yeah. be at top of the mind. A brand does that. It's memorable. It's, it's, yeah. And then also from the peripheral, when people come to your websites and when they look at your social media, it is a, a very well known statistic that they check us out before they call us, before sure. they're already looking at real estate and they're already looking sure. and making a decision who they want to do business with before they call you and say, will you list my house or will you help me find a house? And if your story is tight, looks good, and they understand who you are and what your morals and ethics and, and thought process are, then there's already a bond created before they ever there's ever that connection you know yeah, yeah. so so you guys have all this momentum right now and you do obviously are doing some great things you're working with some great people um what's next for you guys where are you taking this ah uh, very good question very question. good question well i we're, like boss oh. <laughs> <laughs> everywhere is the question the answer yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so so two things you know we've spent um, six and a half years building the real estate. Like we've we've worked almost exclusively in in real estate, and we've spent six and a half years building this just for real estate. And so now it's time for us to hit the road and do some events. And so that's one thing we're looking to do is we're looking to uh, show up at some conferences, and we're just kind of beginning to look into that. We haven't had time to do it. We we really have uh, planned on just setting the company um, it's with a solid foundation. Now it has a solid foundation. We have some amazing team members that help us every day. So we're ready to go out and do that. And then the other thing is um, originally the original brand face book was written for business owners. And so we do already have an online course, uh, a self guided online course teaching business owners how to do that. We don't know if that will culminate in the future into a full eight week done for you kind of a workshop like yep. we're doing for real estate agents. But that is the next frontier for us. Our love is real estate and our love is this, this is what we love to do. And yeah. uh, and we absolutely I have to say this, Mike, before we go today, we have some of the most amazing clients. They're just the most absolutely. amazing people we've ever been blessed to meet and do business with ever. And I, we can't say enough about them because they have helped us grow and they're incredible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So talk a little bit before we before we do part ways here. Talk a little bit about the book and uh, how might somebody get a copy of that? OK, yeah. If you go to brandfacerealestate.com, uh, there's all kinds of information there. There's a link. Uh, you can click on book and there's a link on that page that will take you to Amazon. But you can search it on Amazon. It's Brandface for real estate professionals. Okay. Um, that is that's what it is. And it's kind of like just a textbook, kind of a guide of what is personal branding, what are the principles involved in it? A lot of things you can actually learn from the book. OK. And if somebody if somebody's interested in in um, in sitting down with you guys, 
what does that process look like? How do they get in touch with you, first of all? And, and how would you start with, like, do you guys do, you guys do some sort of an in-depth, like, um, initial meeting? To, what does that look like? Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. It's uh, If you go to discussyourbrand.com, you can apply for um, a session uh, with our team members there. We start digging in there. We figure out, you know, if everything's a fit, we figure out what people's challenges and goals are. We really talk about, you know, where they are now, where they want to be. And we kind of determine, is there a fit here? Do we want to, you know, do they want to come into the program and we can help them from there? And we have different levels of help for, for different people as well. So that'd be where you start. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Is there anything that I didn't ask that I should have? Oh, that's a good I, Yeah, that's too. good too. I, I think you've covered some really good ones, you know, some in-depth questions that we've never been asked before that we, that, that uh, really driving force of why we do this. You know, we, we love working with, uh, with real estate agents because I, I love the industry and because yeah. we're, we're, we're hand in hand with it. Uh, but I'm a serial entrepreneur too. So I was yeah. all of business and I think it's, I think entrepreneurialism is the wave of the future and, yeah. and the United States is poised for that. And uh, it's, it's really exciting times for everybody. So, yeah. I, I, my, like I'm passionate about this. I hope agents, um, I'm not anti-traditional brokerage, but like I, I see, you know, the shift in real estate from um, companies like, you know, Colwell Banker or Berkshire Hathaway and not that they're bad companies, um, but, you know, the shift has become more agent centric, agent centric. And, and so I'm passionate about like the agents getting some of the power back and branding is a huge part of that. And I want people to understand that as you grow out and grow a business that you need to grow your business. It is okay that your broker um, is is there to provide a service for you and to help you and encourage you. But at the end of the day, you got to build your own personal brand. And it's because of people like Tanya and Michael that, you know, that you can go out and and have the courage and, and the confidence in order to do that. So I would highly encourage you to get with, um, if you're not going to get with Tanya or Michael to get with somebody and start and start taking those initial steps to start building your own personal brand, because you will make things much easier for you and your business in the long term. And less like me, who failed at that, obviously, continually. And the funny thing about my story is I was like, I built this huge like. I built this huge past client database and I never tapped into it. You know what I mean? It was always about making more phone calls and I don't want to see other agents make that mistake because it, it's, it's easy to get into a lifestyle of making, you know, hundreds of phone calls every day and it's even easier to get burnout out doing that. And when you create a brand, yeah, when you create a brand for yourself, um, it, it will make, it, it will make that, so that you don't have to do that for the rest of your life. While it will always be part of a business, it will be something that you can leverage out to someone else and your brand will be something that will serve you forever. Well said, yes. Bravo, we couldn't have said that better. (laughs) We couldn't have said it better. And I wanted to leave them with these last words of encouragement that if you are one of the agents and we've heard from many of them who thinks, well, there's nothing really special about me. I'm not different. I'm not this. I'm trying to do what everybody else is doing. You are wrong. There's something special about you. And we like to say, we don't make stars. We unveil them. And that's so true. There's always something special about you and we figure it out and we help you put it out there in a very authentic way. We don't make stars. We unveil them. I love it. I love it. I love it. I could talk for hours about I know lead generation. I mean, this is just I could I could totally geek out over this. I, I love sharing these stories week after week because I know this podcast is literally changing agents, financial lives, my own included. Do me a big favor, guys. If you know someone who might enjoy the podcast, please share it with them. And if you like the podcast, please go to wherever you listen to podcasts and subscribe. If you want to jump on a 30 minute call with me free. For a business strategy session, go to meetmikewall.com. And that is it for this one, folks. Michael, Tanya, thank you so much. Thank, thank you, you, sir. Thank you. We're honored, Mike.